morning, everybody. Welcome here to High Kirk this morning. Um, you're very, very welcome, especially if you're a visitor. If you're a visitor, you're very welcome. Make sure to make yourself known and say hello to somebody on the way out. And if you're joining at home, uh, you're very welcome as well. Um, so uh, this week in, in my small group, we're doing the, um, the Pete Gregg 24-7 uh, prayer course. And if anybody hasn't done that and is looking for something to do in a small group, it's brilliant. Um, it's all available online. They're great videos. Um, giving you kind of practical tips and, and challenges uh, on how to pray, and it's it, it is it's incredibly challenging, and it's um, I know it's asked us a lot of questions that um, we're still working through the answers to. Uh, but this week we were uh, the session was about contemplative prayer, um, and Pete was talking about um, just spending time in the presence of God, uh, focusing on Him, um, on His goodness, um, whatever. Uh, not coming with a shopping list, not coming with a thank you list. But just sitting there and appreciating who God is and what he's done for us and um, just learning more about him just through spending time in his presence. And a real challenge, for, for I think, for a lot of us because I, I don't think we do that. Um, certainly I don't do that very often. Um, prayer tends to be either a thank you list or a shopping list or somewhere in between. Um, but sometimes it's just good to sit in the presence of God and focus on him. So as we praise this morning and as we um, pray and as we listen to Rowan, I would love it if we could just get ourselves to a place where we are just focusing on Jesus. That we lay down whatever we brought with us, um, whether good or bad, and that we just turn our eyes towards Jesus and we focus on him this morning. We contemplate him and his goodness and his grace. And that's my challenge to you this morning. Let's stand and we're just going to pray before we sing. Father God, thank you that we can just come here and stand in your presence, Lord. God, send your spirit to fill us and to help us with that, Lord. Send your spirit to guide us into communion with you here this morning, Lord. Father God, as we pray and as we sing, and as we listen to your word, Lord, I just pray that you would touch us and be with us in a very real way, that we would feel your presence this morning, Lord. God, help us in that. Show yourself to us, Lord. Father God, I pray that your name would be lifted high and would be praised here this morning, God, that to you all the glory belongs here this morning, Lord. God, send your spirit to fill this church and to fill your people, Lord. Come meet us where we are today, Lord. Amen. Our King, come let us bow at His feet. He has the great thing. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has the great thing. God, you do great. of heaven you conquered the grave you free every captive and break every chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom awake and alive oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great Every storm, you'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things, and I know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things. Oh God, you. Oh, gee. 
Well, good morning. Great to see you this morning. And uh, just to add my welcome to Jacob's. A few notices for us this morning. Uh, first of all, uh, there's a car alarm going off um, in the top car park, EF05KPR. I think it's a silver car. It's either a Gulf or a Polo. Uh, if you could uh, uh, attend to that, please, that would be great. Uh, yesterday, we had a uh, coffee morning for the, uh, the teams going out to Kenya and Romania, and uh, so far, uh, £3,949 has been given to that, so thank you very much to the guts of 4000 We'll add on gift aid that, to that, and uh, I do know that other folks are intending to, to bring gifts today, uh, so it's going to be at least that, so thank you very much, and that's a great help uh, and an encouragement to these uh, two young teams as, as they head off in the summer. Uh, so thank you for everyone who has supported that. Uh, this evening at 6.30, we're closing out, closing off the series we've been doing for quite a while now in the Songs of Ascent. Uh, so I'm hoping to speak on Psalm 134 this evening on worship and blessing and what that looks like uh, for us. So that's this evening at half past six. Uh, it would be great to see you. Now this week is a special week in the church calendar, uh, Holy Week as we call it. And uh, all through each day, we will uh, be having special talks. Uh, at lunchtime, we'll be having uh, talks on Women of Holy Week. Rome will be leading our devotions. If you'd like to come for lunch, a soup lunch each day, it's not too late to register your interest for that, but we do need to know for catering purposes. Uh, so if you're on Church Suite or through the website, you can sign up for that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. That's at 12.30. And then the talks are repeated in the evening. If you can't make the daytime, they're repeated in the evening at 7.30. There's also a cup of tea or coffee. Uh, so please do take that on board, we'll meeting out in the foyer. And it's always a great preparation as we head up to Easter. And then on Good Friday evening, uh, we have our special communion service here in the sanctuary at 8 p.m. It's always a very special service, and uh, we look forward to joining together as we remember Christ's death on the cross for us. That's at 8 p.m. on Friday evening. Uh, and then next Sunday morning, we're celebrating Easter Day, Resurrection Day, the day that changed everything, the day that changed the world. Uh, it's going to be slightly different next week in that we have one morning service, okay, so please do note this, one morning service, and it's at 10.30, and the boys and girls will have their own separate program from the very beginning, so parents, whenever you're bringing your children in, you go straight to the Makahe Hall, they register the children there, they will have a separate program for the whole service, uh, and we'll be uh, at 10.30. Now, the other thing to remember is that the clocks go forward an hour next Sunday, so it'll actually be like 9.30. Anyway, so that's all right. Okay, so uh, uh, it, it'll be effectively another 9.30 service for you folks. Uh, so 10.30 anyway, uh, officially, next Sunday morning. Now, the other important announcement I have, and you will read about this in the uh, Contact magazine, and by the way, Deliverers, if you haven't picked up your box yet, they're out in the foyer for delivery of contact for Easter uh, and next Sunday, uh, as well as a gift day for United Appeals. So please do be generous as we support the wider work of PCI in Ireland and overseas. So please do bring your envelopes as well. Uh, but in that magazine, uh, I, we share how the Kirk Session has decided uh, to change uh, pre-communion services, that we will no longer have the midweek pre-communion services that we have usually prior to the May and November communions. Uh, kind of a, uh, going back to the, the old communion seasons that they used to have in the Presbyterian Church, where there was the preparation service midweek, and then there was communion on the morning, and then there was a Thanksgiving service in the evening. Uh, and we're kind of not in that place anymore in the, in the sense that we now have six communion services, not just two. And in a sense, all the communion services are equally important, and yet we don't prepare ourselves or have midweek pre-communions six times a year. So what the Kirk Session has decided to do is to take the elements of pre-communion and to bring them into a Sunday morning prior to a communion service. And so we're going to have communion on Good Friday, 
So we're bringing forward into this morning service the two elements that we have at a pre-communion service so that more of the congregation can be engaged and involved. So shortly I'll be praying a, a prayer of preparation for communion on Good Friday. But the other thing that we do at those services is welcome new members on transfer and new members on profession of faith. Now, in terms of new members and profession of faith, that will probably have to wait to May and November uh, because the foundation course uh, needs to be completed for those folks. But during the year, we have other people who join us as full communicant members. They're joining us from a, another congregation, another denomination. And we want to welcome them, not just twice a year, uh, but as they join us six times through the year. So today is one of those services where we want to welcome those who have transferred into our membership as full communicant members over the last few months. And the session thought also that what we would do is uh, bring these folks up to the front, uh, pray for them, welcome them, uh, so that you see them as well. In a big congregation, it's hard to spot who's new, who's not new, so uh, at least this is an opportunity. So since we've had our last communion, we've had a number of folks have joined us, and uh, some of them are here at the 9.30. So if you don't mind, and if you have children, you can bring them with you. And just line up here as I, as I read your names. Uh, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for you. Uh, so Johnny Clements and Sarah Clements, if you'd like to, to join me at the front here. Uh, Lois Elder, Gareth Gracie, and Jill Gracie. Nobody's moving yet. Oh, they're starting to move. Uh, Gary Kernighan and Karen Kernighan. If they're here. Lise McCulloch, Jim McCulloch, James and Zoe Scullion, if these folks want to line up. That's great. It's good to have you folks. That's good. You're sort of facing the congregation. That means they can recognize you, so that's, that's good as well. I don't have to tell you to do that. So I'm going to ask the congregation to stand, and we're going to make an affirmation as we welcome you into the church fellowship. And it's on the screen, and we're going to affirm this over you and affirm together as you join with us officially as new professing members of High Kirk. So let's say together, as a community ruled by God the Father, redeemed by God the Son, and led by God the Spirit, and in welcoming you as new members to this church, we make these affirmations. We affirm the apostles' faith and the covenant calling of our baptism to be the people of God. To you we say, join us as we worship him together. We humbly share our commitment to live together as a community seeking to be obedient to Jesus in everything. There is no part of our life together which we refuse to submit to his lordship. And to you we say, join us as we live for him together. We confidently declare our intention to be witnesses to Christ's transforming presence in our community and beyond, and commit to supporting this mission by praying, giving, and working. To you we say, join us as we serve him together. The congregation may be seated as I lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these new members joining us, transferring into our congregation. For Johnny and Sarah, for Lois, and Gareth and Jill, for Gary and Karen, Lisa, Jim, James and Zoe, and their families. We pray your blessing upon them we pray your encouragement into their lives. We pray, Lord Jesus, that they would get to know people, that they would be serving, loving, learning, and witnessing, and reaching others. We thank you for every family in this church. Help us to know the love of Jesus Christ for us. And Lord, as we prepare for Good Friday, we thank you that Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem. He laid down his life for us. And as we go through this holy week, as we go to the services, may we prayerfully prepare our hearts as we seek to receive communion on Good Friday. 
As we remember that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, he shed his blood, he suffered and died in our place. We pray, O oh God, that these services and Good Friday and Easter Sunday will be special, that they will encourage us in our faith, and they will encourage us to grow more and more like Jesus Christ, the lovely Lord Jesus whom we serve. And we pray all our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Uh, one of our elders, Colin Patton, is going to come and formally give the right hand of fellowship uh, to each of our new members. Where is Colin? There he is. And uh, just welcome you officially on behalf of the Kirk Session and the congregation. And as he does that, let's welcome all these folks as we congratulate them. And you can take your seats, although some of you will be coming back up again for the children's song. I'll let you take your seats. And uh, boys and girls, uh, before you go out to High Kirk Kids, I want to invite you up as we sing your song together. stand together as we sing Jesus you came Jesus you came a servant to do your father's will through Satan's worst temptations you were only To must be a servant today and all my days to use the gifts you've given to bring you joy and praise. Though I am sure to fail you, you are so faithful, and though I stumble, you will pick me up again. Cause I want to be like you are. Be faithful, help me to be like you are. Oh, make me faithful, Jesus. You're my faithful friend. You will help me to the end, Jesus. You're my faithful. Friend. to be like you are, oh, make me faithful, cause I want to be like you are, I want to be faithful, help me to be like you are, oh, make me faithful,
We're gonna stand together, we're just gonna sing uh, before Rome comes to share. He 
will never fail Yes, I trust in God My Savior, the one Who will never fail He will never fail submission cause all is at rest I know the author of tomorrow has ordered my steps and this is my story and this is my in my risen King and Savior all the day long Cause I trust in God my Savior the one who will never fail and He will never fail That's why I trust in, that's why I trust in, I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered, I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered, I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered me, that's why I trust in, that's why I trust in God, I say. morning. Good to be out and worshiping with you this morning, just to come and, and just rest in the presence of God, just to feel Him here with us and restoring us and, and offering us life and offering us peace and, and, and comfort, whatever it is that you are going through in your life, you have the assurance that God is with us um, in, in all things. Uh, if you're visiting with us this morning, uh, you're very, very welcome. The folk online that are joining us, I'm good to connect with you in that way. Um, I'm Rowan. I'm one of the staff here in High Kirk, and it is lovely um, to welcome you here. There is tea and coffee after the service. Um, please do stick around. Uh, join in the conversation, folks that are regularly here. If you spot anybody that looks unfamiliar, go over and say hello. Make them feel welcome. Please do that. Shall we come before God in prayer? God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the privilege of, of being able to gather together in your name and to come and bring you worship, to come before you in prayer, to enjoy your presence and, and, and just to know that you are with us in all things. And God, today we want to lift up to you people um, who, who need to know that you are with them in all things, people who are going through, through difficult times, uh, people who are struggling, people who, who are trying to get well and, and, and feel so unwell. 
uh, people who, who wake up each morning and struggle to face the day that lies ahead of them, people who feel that there is no meaning and no purpose, uh, and, and, and why should they? Uh, God, we want to lift them up to you, and we ask you to reach out to them, God. Draw close to them so that they can draw close to you. Loving God, we, we pray that you will bring peace into their hearts. We pray that you will bring assurance into their minds, that you will bring light into their darkness, that you will bring life where they feel that they just cannot continue. And where there is sickness and disease, God, we pray for healing. We pray, God, that in the name of Jesus, in the powerful name of Jesus, you will reach out and heal them and restore their bodies, restore strength to them, Lord. Restore hope to them. Restore joy to them, Lord. Restore light and restore life. Because you are the way, the truth, and the life. And so we pray, God, we pray for these folk that mean so much to us, people that we love so dearly. We pray that we will know, that they will know that there is a God who loves them and who is with them. We pray, God, as we come into, into Holy Week, um, we pray for all that this means to us in our Christian faith of a God who gave his life for us. We pray, God, for those who don't yet know that or haven't yet accepted as the truth in their life. We pray, God, that the season of Easter, that you will speak to them in some way, that they will see beyond the bunnies and the eggs, but they will see the God who laid down his life for them. But more than that, the God who rose again so that death no longer has victory over us. Death no longer has a hold over us. God, we pray for those who have drawn themselves away from you, that in this time of Easter they will draw close to you. We pray, God, for our young people as they go on, on holiday, as they take a break over this Easter time. Lord, we know that what lies beyond Easter is, for many of them, is, is the final straight um, into significant exams or a significant time of, of their lives, Lord, where there is change coming. It might be um, those in P7 who are, who are moving into high school. Lord, as that stage of their education and their life draws to a close, God, we pray that they will end well. Uh, and they will look forward to what lies ahead. For those who are writing big exams, Lord, we pray that in this final time of preparation, uh, you will help them to be disciplined. You will help them to retain the knowledge um, that they need to retain, God. And as what lies beyond becomes closer and closer and more of a reality, Lord, we pray that you will fill them with excitement uh, for, for what lies beyond the school year. But Lord, may this... This Easter break be a, a time of rest for them, but also a time of preparation. May you help them to get the balance right. And we pray for the parents who come alongside them. We pray that you will encourage us um, to draw close to our children, to encourage them, um, and to help them in this preparation time. And God, when we look at the world beyond ourselves, we think of what, what has happened in Russia um, this weekend, Lord, the, 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 the horror of the attack there. Um, Lord, it is just a reminder to us, Lord, that there is so much hatred in this world. We pray, God, your love to come into these places. We see what is happening still in Ukraine. We see what continues to happen in the Middle East, particularly what is happening in Gaza and the horror and the hatred and the terror that is going on there, Lord, the fear and anxiety. And God, what we pray for is peace. A peace that is not the peace that the world gives. A peace that is far deeper than that. A peace that goes beyond our understanding. That starts in the depths of us, Lord. And then breaks out into the world. And so we pray, God, that your people, your people will be like lights in the darkness of these places, Lord. We pray for protection over our Christian brothers and sisters, wherever they find themselves, whether it is in Ukraine or Russia, whether it is in Israel or Gaza, right here in Northern Ireland, all over the world, Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters that you will protect them, but also, Lord, that you will raise them up, that they will speak your truth and your love into these dark places. And so, God, as we gather together here and we pray for your spirit to come here, we also pray, God, that your spirit will go out into the world. 
and touch people's lives, Lord, the people that we lift up to you today. In the name of Jesus, amen. We are in a series at the moment, a sermon series looking at, um, at signs of glory, looking at the, the second half of John's gospel, um, and we're back into it today, but we're, we're jumping back um, to, to an earlier part of, of um, John chapter 12. Uh, we're going to be looking at, at, at verses 12 through to 19, um, page 1079 if you're following in the Pew Bibles, John's Gospel chapter 12. Um, today is Palm Sunday, so we're jumping back into, into that section uh, where, where John tells the story of Jesus arriving in Jerusalem. Uh, page 1079 if you're in the Pew Bibles, John chapter 12, beginning at verse 12. And this is what John writes. He says, the next day the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it. As it is written, do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, these disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard what, that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. And we will end our reading there. Shall we pray? God, we pray your blessing upon your word as it has been given to us. We thank you um, that it speaks into our hearts still today and into our lives and into our world. And we pray, God, as we think about what John has written there, as we try to unpack it and understand it, we pray that you will speak to us, Lord, that you will draw us close to you, closer and close, so that we will recognize who you are. You are the king who reigns, and here you come, calling us to you. And so, God, we pray that you will speak to us through the words prepared today. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So as I say, it's Palm Sunday, and, and I've preached a, a, lot of, a lot of Palm Sunday sermons, um, and the temptation is always there to find one and, and refresh it um, and, and do something different with it, but, but what occurred to me this week is, um, as I was looking at, at the reading is, I don't think I've ever preached on John's version uh, of, of Palm Sunday, of the triumphal entry. Matthew, Mark, and Luke's versions are all quite similar to each other, and the story that we're familiar with around Palm Sunday is probably a blend um, of, of their stories, of their versions of, of this triumphal entry. Jesus sends his disciples to go fetch a donkey, and there's that little um, conversation around with, with the guy that owns the donkey. Um, the crowd gather, they wave palms, they shout Hosanna. Um, in Matthew's version, the people ask, who is this person? Who is Jesus? Um, in Luke's version, the Pharisees get all upset about it. Um, John has some of these elements, not all of them, but he has some of these elements, but it feels like John downplays them a bit. John mentions the people waving um, palms and singing Hosanna. The donkey is there, but, but we're told that Jesus found the donkey. He didn't send his disciples. It just says, Jesus found the donkey. Uh, and then John says that, that it was only after Jesus was glorified, which is the way John talks about um, Jesus dying on the cross. Um, only after Jesus was glorified, only then did the disciples realize everything that was going on um, here as Jesus comes into Jerusalem. And then we get to the bit that didn't make it into the other versions. Um, and this is the bit that made me realize that, that I don't think I've preached on John because I don't remember um, ever mentioning this in, in any other sermon. Verses 17 to 19, John, John writes this. He says, um, and this is, this is not the version that we've just read. This is the New Living Translation. He says, many in the crowd had seen Jesus called Lazarus from the tomb, raising him from the dead, and they were telling others about it. That was the reason so many went out to meet him, because they had heard about this miraculous sign. And then the Pharisees said to each other, there is nothing we can do. Look, everyone has gone after him. 
And these are the verses that I want to focus on this morning. And there's three things that jumped out at me um, when I read this that I want to talk about. The first thing is, is the mention of Lazarus. John makes the resurrection of Lazarus a, a key event uh, in the plot to kill Jesus. John 11, the previous chapter, gives us the story um, of, of how Jesus raised Lazarus uh, from the dead. And, and we looked at it in an earlier sermon series when we did the first part of John's gospel, Signs of Life. Um, the mention of Lazarus here in, in, in the story about the triumphal entry takes our minds back um, to that story. And it reminds us that there were, there were two responses um, to Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Uh, John 11 verse 45 and 46 says that many of the people who were with Mary believed in Jesus when they saw this happen, but some went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. That part of the story then goes on to say that the Pharisees um, were then, they all got together and, and they were discussing um, their fear of what might happen if, if all these people suddenly um, followed Jesus and, and, and wanted to do whatever it was that he, he wanted them to do. And then in the middle of that conversation, the high priest at the time, a, a man called Caiaphas, um, he says, it's better that one man should die for the people than for the whole nation to be destroyed. So much unintended truth in that statement that he makes there. So much truth that, that he wasn't intending um, or, or certainly wasn't meaning. When Jesus arrives in Jerusalem, what we see is the same two responses again of, of Jesus' arrival. Those who had seen what Jesus had done with Lazarus were shouting and cheering his arrival and the less than impressed Pharisees trying to figure out what to do about Jesus. And that is the same two options that every person has when they're confronted with Jesus. Either welcome him or work out what do I do with him and maybe try to keep him out of their lives. When it comes to Jesus, you can't sit on the fence. You're either welcoming him or you're rejecting him. And what those who welcome him will discover is that what he offers and what they will receive is new life. And those who reject him who try to destroy him, who try to ignore him, what they discover is that Jesus is going nowhere. Jesus is here, and he's here to stay. There is nothing we can do, as all the Pharisees can say. Again, so much unintended truth in that statement. There is nothing we can do. Those who had seen what Jesus did in Bethany, those who were told in the previous chapter now believed in Jesus, they now believed in Jesus, they went out and told other people what Jesus had done, and he was now on his way to Jerusalem. Many in the crowd had seen Jesus call Lazarus from the tomb, raising him from the dead, and they were telling others about it. That's the reason, John writes, that's the reason many went out to meet him, because they had heard about this miraculous sign. In the other Gospels, we're told that Jesus' followers went ahead of him into Jerusalem. They stirred up the crowd. And now John is very specific about how they stirred up the crowd. What is it that they went in and they told people that stirred the crowd up to come and greet him? They're telling people that Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus was dead, but now he's alive. And the person who made that happen is coming. The person who can restore life, the person who can give life, he is coming. And not just life, but life to the fullest. So come, come and see him. And they did. And because these people in Jerusalem were hearing something that they desperately wanted to hear, that was why they came. Which is the second thing that I want to point out from these verses. These people were coming to see the person who could restore life. But they weren't coming as celebrity spotters. They weren't coming hoping to catch a sight of a, of a celebrity come to town. They came looking for Jesus. Because if this man can give life to a dead person, what could he give to them that they so desperately longed for? Here was a man who offered not just life, but life to the full. Life with meaning and purpose and freedom and fulfillment. There couldn't have been much of that around on offer anywhere else. But now that we're hearing that the one person who was offering that was coming to Jerusalem... They had been waiting for a Messiah who would come and change the circumstances of the world around them, set them free from the empire that occupied their land, that limited their freedoms, that dictated what they could and couldn't do. 
But instead, here was a Messiah coming who could change them from within, who could move them from darkness into light, from captivity to freedom, and from death to life. And when I think about what was going on in Jerusalem nearly 2,000 years ago, I don't think much has changed. I don't think much has changed at all. There is still a desperate longing and a seeking for meaning and for purpose and for freedom and for fulfillment in our lives. And there is still a belief that if my circumstances can change, then things will be better. If I can make more money, if I can live in the right area, if I can change jobs, if I can move to a new, new place, perhaps if I leave my spouse, if things were just different, then they'd be better constantly looking at changing our external circumstances. But the change that needs to happen isn't what's going on around us. The change that needs to happen is what's going on inside of us. John is saying to us here, yeah, look, if you're looking for fulfillment in your life, if you're looking for abundance in life, if you're looking for restoration in your life, look no further than Jesus, because he's coming. The king is coming, and he brings life with him. If you are looking for a better life, then look no further than Jesus. Not an easier life, but a better life. It's what Norman said a few weeks ago, that when you become a follower of Jesus, your life will be better, but it won't be any easier. And it's in the reaction of the Pharisees that we get the hint of why the life of a Christian will not be easier. Verse 19 says, Then the Pharisees said, said to each other, There is nothing we can do. Look, everyone has gone after him. Maybe it's because we know how the story eventually plays out, but when I, when I read that verse, I get an Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of feel about it. You know, that nothing we can do, but we'll be back. Joanne asked me to try to do the accent. I'm not doing it. Um, no. Nah. Um, we'll be back. <laughs> It reminds me of something that we read in Luke's gospel when, when Jesus is out in the wilderness being tempted by Satan. And it says that when the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. The Pharisees might not have been able to do anything right there, but they weren't done with him yet. They would be back. And if Satan wasn't going to, try, uh, wasn't going to stop trying to stop Jesus from bringing life, then he won't stop trying to stop you and me. He will keep coming back at us again and again. It reminds me of what Paul writes in Ephesians 6, 10 to 12. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against enemies of flesh and blood, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Wherever God is bringing life, Satan is trying to stop him. In John 10, Jesus says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and life to the full. That is the battle. God bringing life and Satan trying to destroy it. It's what we see happening in the Garden of Eden. It's what we see happening when Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead in John 11, and the Pharisees decide that they need to kill Jesus and they need to get rid of Lazarus. We see it in some of the events that lie ahead of us this week when they plot to kill Jesus. Again and again, Satan will try and stop Jesus, try and stop uh, and destroy what he is bringing into people's lives. And as far as Satan is concerned, Jesus must be stopped. Jesus must die. He just didn't realize how right he was. That Jesus must die. That Jesus had to die. He had to die so that he could offer us the life that we so desperately long for. Better that one man should die for the people than the whole nation to be destroyed. On Friday evening at 8 o'clock on Good Friday, as Norman said, we will share in communion together an act of remembrance for the life that Jesus laid down for us. There is an invitation for you to come and join us. Not from us, but from God. It is an invitation whose echo can still be heard loudly and clearly through the centuries since it was first spoken.
do this in remembrance of me. In High Kirk, we say that you are welcome to participate, to share in the breaking of bread if you love the Lord Jesus. If you are sitting here today and you love the Lord Jesus, then over the coming days, as you prepare to receive these elements of bread and wine, consider the life that Jesus has restored to you. Not necessarily an easier life, but a better life, a more fulfilling life. And then come with hearts of thanksgiving for what he has done for you because he loves you. But if you don't yet love the Lord Jesus, then perhaps you might consider the life that he offers. Something that this world can never offer to you. A full life. A life with purpose, a life with meaning, a life with direction. A life that is made possible through his death. Because Jesus died and rose again, death no longer has the final say. Jesus defeated death and in doing so, he defeated the one who champions death. And perhaps if you consider this over the coming days, what Jesus has done for you because he loves you, then perhaps you will also come to love the Lord Jesus. Perhaps you will also consider then joining us on Friday evening to remember how Jesus gave his life for you. Here comes Jesus. Here comes the King of life. By the standards of the world that we're used to, he might seem a little undignified, riding on a donkey. He might seem a little bit unimpressive, especially when you look at his followers. He might seem somewhat insignificant, coming from a corner of the corner of, a, of the Roman Empire. He might seem weak, destined for a cross. But if you're looking for life today, he will raise you up. If you're looking for light, he will overcome your darkness. If you are looking for freedom, he will give you true freedom. Not the freedom that the world thinks that you have, but true freedom. If you're looking for purpose and meaning, then come and meet the author of your salvation. The one who gives you life and guides your life and leads you into eternal life. He is coming. He is here. Are you ready to greet him? Are you ready to say, yes, I love him because he loves me. I want to give him my life because he gave his life for me. He waits with arms wide open to welcome you because he loves you. Shall we pray? Thank you, Jesus, for not staying distant for coming into this world triumphant, one who, who has conquered death, one who has said to Satan, you can try and try and try, but you will not win. And not just Jesus that comes into this world, but the Holy Spirit that comes into this world. And so when, Je when, when Jesus says to Satan, you will not win, he's saying, and you will not be victorious over my people either. Because my spirit is with them. My spirit is in them. We thank you and we welcome you, Lord Jesus. We thank you and we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We thank you and we welcome you, Father. And we raise our hands and we raise our voices and we shout Hosanna in the highest. We welcome the King. We lift up his name. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. We thank you for your love and for your goodness. Amen. While the worship team lead us in, in, in our closing time, a, a song of worship, um, if anybody here um, just, just really feels a, a, a need for prayer, if anybody feels that there's things that they're carrying with them or, or things that they need to be released from, um, there is a prayer ministry team who, who will come forward during the singing of the song um, and, and do, do feel free to come and, and be prayed with or perhaps you want to wait afterwards once everybody is gone, they will still be about. Um, but but don't, don't go from here if, if there's something that you just need to be lifted from, um, something that you just need to be released from. Um, there are people who would love, love to pray with you 
Or maybe you're just celebrating something. Maybe there's something really good and exciting. Um, because you know what? It's not all down and dreary. When we follow us of Jesus, there's the good things too. Um, and maybe you just want somebody to celebrate that with you. Um, come down and, and have someone pray a prayer of celebration uh, with you as well, a prayer of thanksgiving. But don't miss out the opportunity um, to be prayed with and to be prayed for. God 
extend that invitation once again, um, not just for prayer, but to consider. Um, I just remember when I was a young man of 25, and my life was just going absolutely nowhere. Um, who knows what it was destined for, but, um, but just changed my life. Um, certainly not easier. <laughs> it's, been, it's been really hard, uh, but it's certainly better. Um, definitely with purpose, definitely with meaning, definitely with direction. Um, really do want you to think seriously about that. Um, if, if you're just in that place where you think, where on earth am I going? in this life, what on earth is going on around me? Um, what hope is there? Uh, I, I can tell you, <laughs> Jesus is definitely the answer. Jesus is definitely the direction uh, to travel in. Um, so there, there will be people who would love to pray with you um, during, during this time. Uh, tea and coffee, uh, Norman did mention about the Holy Week talks. There's also a sign-up sheet on the welcome desk. Um, we kind of need our numbers finalized uh, around the end of the second service. So if you're not going to be able to get your name down on church suite before then, just add it to that list there so that we know what to expect in the coming days. It's just for the lunchtime you need to sign up. Shall we share the grace with one another? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. <laughs>